17 year old Debbie is partying her life away. I know I sound really bad. Like underage drinking, um, older boyfriends, going out every weekend. She's completely dropped out of college and spends her days sleeping and obsessing over her appearance. I've got seven mascaras that I use. I think I've got a certain order that I've got to use them in as well. I'm a bit OCD with that actually. <laughs> I just didn't see the problem with a few people sat upstairs having a drink. But you didn't ask. Debbie's stepfather, Dave, has been a part of her life since she was four years old. When I was younger, I was like his little princess, to be honest. Like, um, I remember it, it was always him that I went to. But in recent years, the relationship has completely broken down. I am being this considerate. They're not coming here, are they? Debbie, so there's not a problem. No, listen. They're not coming here, so there's not listen. a problem. We're always at loggerheads. She just will not accept the responsibility of being an adult or of even being a human being at the moment. Oh my god! See how fast I I hate being told what to do. I, oh, it really grates on us. Like, I don't mind being asked to do something, but as soon as someone says, you will do this, the first thing I say is, no, I won't. The guidance that we're given her is falling on deaf ears, and at the minute, I'm at a loss as to exactly where to move forward from here. And what have you done all afternoon? What have you done? Because you won't have done schoolwork. You haven't done what I've asked you to do. I know what you've done. You've laid on the sofa. You've watched TV all afternoon. Over in Leeds, 17-year-old Daniel <laughs> is driving his parents to distraction. Daniel is selfish, stubborn, lazy, dirty, grubby, filthy. Every day, I'd say we end up having some kind of argument, for want of a better of a word, with him, really. My lifestyle is self-indulgent and decadent, like doing anything without regard for others, as long as I get personal fulfilment from it. Daniel does nothing to help around the house, spending all his time on his rock band, The Psycho Strangers. I can't bear to speak to another teacher again. We'd have teachers ringing us every week, the same teacher ringing us every week, he's still not done that work. We argue about my schoolwork a lot, because I don't do it or I don't go, so. It's just been sort of never-ending for the last two, three, four years. And this is a child that supposedly wants to go to university. Daniel was a promising student, but he's been asked to leave two out of his four A-level courses. He's so much cleverer than I am that it, it just, it's just such a waste. And it's not that he needs to make a massive effort, he just needs to make a little effort and he'd go a long way. He thinks he's a rock star. He absolutely thinks he's a rock star. And that's, you know, yes, it's good that he's got music in his life, but he's got to learn about other things in life as well. He's got to learn, know that he's got to do well at school and that he may not become a famous rock star. To try and get their lives back on track, both families have agreed to send their wayward children to live with new parents on the other side of the world. Oh, have a good time. Use this. I'm give you the sensible. Make me proud. A any change would be brilliant for Daniel. Any change in respect of his attitude. Be less selfish and be less narrow-minded and have a bit more understanding of, of other people's needs. Have a nice time. Oh, All right. right. I mean, take care of yourself, baby. Oh, I will. Yeah, but I want you to enjoy everything as well. Yeah, I will. And come back and learn something. And if I can give you that, to treat yourself. All right. I hope they are strict and enforce the rules, because then she might realise just how easy she's got it here. I'm Debbie. I'm Daniel. Cool. Are you nervous? I'm well nervous. <laughs> I'm shitting myself down. For the next 10 days, the teen's new home will be Beirut, capital city of Lebanon. It's the most culturally diverse city in the Middle East. Here, they'll be staying with the a Sunni Muslim family who believe that rigid boundaries are essential in raising rounded children. 
Come on. I think respect is everything in the world. When I punished, I punished really hard. Dad Abdul Salam was a policeman, while Mum Iman is a nurse. They are the proud parents of 17-year-old Mahmoud and 16-year-old Janan. You have to better your handwriting. Studying is very important. If they got no grades in school, they will be punished. Iman strictly controls all outside influences on her children's lives. I always go through their emails. And even, uh, you know, we have Facebook. I always um, make like surprising them. What you gonna do? What you gonna, what are you doing? Oh, nice, who's this girl, who's this boy? I always ask. They tell me the truth. They have got nothing to hide. Being rude to your parents is actually not good at all because um, they raised you. Dry the dishes and the kitchen like this. As a progressive Muslim family, the are keen to expose the Western teens to their cultural values. Americans and the Britain and all the other world think we're we are terrorists, we are, think we are bad people, but it's not like that. We are open-minded, we go out, we, but we have some rules. We, we don't drink, we don't do bad things. This is um, some orders, we have to obey them. Uh, and we, if we don't, we, we get punished. The teenagers, the British teenagers, they will learn a lot from the uh, Lebanese family. After a 2,000 mile journey, Daniel and Debbie arrive in Beirut. It was once a popular tourist destination, known as the Paris of the Middle East. There seems to be a lot of shit everywhere, doesn't it? They've all got proper banged out cars as well. They're all scratched and dinted. They're all ridiculously crazy drivers. But this is a city ravaged by years of conflict. It still bears the scars of a 15 year civil war and was bombed by Israel in 2006. God, do you see the size of his school? Oh, my God. I don't know if I'd like to live here. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Nice Debbie? Yeah, I'm Debbie, yeah. I'm Iman. <laughs> this is my Hi, husband, yeah. Abdus <laughs> My son, Mahmoud. Hi, yeah. I'm Jinan. Hi, Hello, Hi. how are you, Daniel? I'm good. <laughs> I'm Iman Hajjad. It seems that you smoke, Daniel. Yeah. Smoking is not allowed in our house. Oh, OK. OK. Welcome to our house. From now on, Debbie and Daniel will live according to the same rules as the Hajjar children. This is our small, oh, small, small, humble house. Yes. Not at all. It's twice yes, it the is. size of my house. <laughs> yes, my husband doesn't speak too much Arabic, English. He okay. speaks only. Arabic, but yeah. a little bit of English. He's just uh, going to tell you that smoking is not allowed in our house. Okay. For our health, yeah, but yeah. also for Mahmoud's health. Yeah. Definitely. He was born with the health problems. Yeah. So smoking will bother him a lot. Inside the house, no smoking. Okay, that's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, you don't smoke. No, I don't. Thank God. And here is your room. Oh, it's dead nice. Debbie will share a room with Janan. Now you've got a dead nice house. Thank you. It's bigger than mine, seriously. While Daniel will take Mahmoud's room. The family all seem really nice. Like, it seems like Iman controls the, controls the family and the dad seems a bit more laid back. They seem uh, quite um, kind and sweet. Maybe, it's, maybe after they heard the rules, maybe they'll change. But the beginning was the good. Before the teens are fully welcomed into the family, Aman wants to make their expectations absolutely clear. Whilst you are living with us, OK, uh, we expect you to behave as though you are a member of our family, the Hajjar family. Yeah. This includes following all of our house regulations. There will be no drinking of alcohol, no smoking, within or outside of these walls. You must dress modestly and respectfully. And boys or men are never, ever allowed to pee standing up. Okay. Because we go and wash in the bathroom, so we have to make sure that there is no pee in the bathroom. I could be careful. You can't. You can't be <laughs> sure. You must eat whatever is available at home without any complaints, especially during escalations or times of war. Nobody knows when Israel will come and bombard us. Any visit to friends are only allowed once mom has met and that is the friend's mom. 
to make sure the family are suitable. So do you not trust your children? I do trust them. Or... I do trust them. They trust that what I'm doing, me and their father, is for their own benefits. Fair dues. I hope that you'll enjoy uh, staying at our house. He wanted to obey the rules and help us to obey the rules so that we'll be all be happy. Like, some of them are just a pile of shit, to be honest. It says you must dress modestly and respectfully. Like, I'm wearing my little hot pants. I bought them just for you. I'm not going to... I'm glad I get to sit down and pee, though. That's <laughs> it. I don't get why. Table. What did she I'm say? I'm going to take why? a book in and make a right deal of it. <laughs> and I'm not just going to get married just off sex. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to... I've seen the daughter looking at you. <laughs> at the beginning, they're going to suffer with me. Yes, they will. Because uh, from their uh, reaction, it seems that they are not going to... They don't like most of the rules. But uh, this is my house, these are my rules, they have to obey it. The Hajars disapprove of drinking alcohol as their Muslim faith bans all intoxicants. Debbie, though, has smuggled some vodka from home. I bought, like, alcohol as well. <laughs> you look dead scared. It's all right. Don't worry, you won't get into trouble, like. But, um, yeah, like, I always have a few drinks when I go on holiday. If she finds out, she's going to go mad, isn't she? Um, if you want, you can, you can give it to her. She'll... Oh, no. I'm not going cost money. I'm not giving it No, no, me. she's going to give it back to you when, you, when you're going back. Oh, I'll just drink it. It'll be fine. Me and Daniel are going to go out, so... If Debbie tries to drink the alcohol here, she, in the house, she's going to be caught. You know, because uh, I'm here, my mother's here. Uh, she's definitely not going to be hidden anywhere because there's no place to be ha hidden in. And even if she's outside, we're going to be with her. And my mom's going to be with her, so definitely she's not going to drink those. For Debbie, modest clothing is a totally new concept. It's a bit better. So we're going to end up with dead dodgy tan lines. Mm. What the hell are you doing? Some bathing. OK, I'm sorry, you can't do it here. Why? No, because we have strict neighbours, they are all Muslims. If they saw you, they will make a big, big problem with us. OK? No, no one can see us on the balcony, though. Yes, there will be, yes. They can't. There's no, 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 no. There's no way. No, one no way, no way. Come on, yeah. Come on. No way. Come no, on, you have to put on that. the abaya. No, 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 no way. Put yeah. it on me. No way. I'm not a child. Yes, you are. Do you mind not putting that over my head? OK. Would you mind to wear decent clothes? I am wearing decent clothes. No, they are not. They're fine. They're OK. No, 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 no. Don't. no way. No There's way. No... They're fine. There's nothing... Aman decides to search yeah. Debbie's suitcase and confiscate any other inappropriate clothing. No, no, I'm not going to take them. I'm going to put them, put them in a bag. No. But in I a swear, bag. you're not taking them. You're going to stay on your uh, luggage. As long Just... as after, you're not taking my clothes. OK, fine. You're going to stay here. Mm -hmm. Fine for me. Stay. Wear this and stay at the room. Cool. Fill in. But you are not allowed to get out of the room until you change your clothes. That's fine. I've got okay. plenty the shorts and vest tops to okay. wear, so that's all right. I hope you won't be bored sitting on the lug in your luggage. You'll be hungry, you have to go to the toilet. Don't no, you? I could not eat for days. It's fine. You don't have to need to go to the toilet? No. We'll see. No, fine with me. You have to stay here. Mm-hmm. If you change your mind, I'm waiting for you. Cool. Debbie, I think she is a little bit... Uh, uh, she seems nice, but she is a little bit naughty. With Aman's back turned, Debbie wastes no time in breaking yet another rule. Oh, my God, Debbie, you are smoking. No, that's um, Daniel's. I'm just holding it for a sec. Really? I yeah, well, I don't smoke. I know that you don't smoke. No. But I see my bottle light. Oh, they were mine, they're mine. Well, they're his. I bought some today. I can count one, two, three. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to smoke anymore. Can I smell your mouth? Yeah. 
I see that you asked me. No, I took one. Yes, you are. You took one. But I thought you don't smoke. No, I don't. It's just been a stressful day. You smell now. You are smelling. Yeah. <laughs> really? Stick. So you want to smell like him? <laughs> oh, thanks, yeah. He's going to get angry because I'm going to take his cigarettes off from him. But uh, he must be punished. It's the end of the day, and both Debbie and Daniel are starting to realise just what they've let themselves in for. Yeah, I'm not dependent on them. I can go without them. It's just a comfort there, so I'm like, people have sweets or chocolate or whatever. I've got cigarettes. Everyone kept telling us it's not a holiday, it's not a holiday. And I came expecting a holiday, and it's not at all. My first day is shit. <laughs> I want to go home. The Hajar family rise at dawn each day for morning prayer. Good morning. Today, Aman is keen to give the teens an education in Lebanon's long religious history. Come on. She's taking them to an ancient mosque sited on the ruins of a church built by European crusaders nearly 800 years ago. It's called Al Omari Mosque. It's a very old mosque you can see from the construction. Uh, you are not allowed to, go to, get, to get into the mosque wearing these clothes. Okay. Aman wants Debbie to experience Islam from a woman's perspective. Okay. So this one for you. Oh, you look so beautiful. I don't, I feel really yes, uncomfortable. Yes, you are. I swear, you are. You look so beautiful. Do you not feel dead trapped? I do. Oh. I've only just put it on. It's dead. OK. Really? You look so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, mm, I don't feel it. Doesn't you? <laughs> you look so beautiful. God, honestly, I feel dead uncomfortable. You look like Mother Teresa. <laughs> I feel, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. I really don't care. I just want to leave. I don't feel comfortable at all. At the mosque, men and women pray separately. Before Muslims enter the prayer hall, they must be entirely clean. I, wash, I first wash my hands, the left leg to the right hand, and also up to the knee. But despite Aman's efforts, Debbie can't see beyond the superficial. Like, it's like claustrophobic, it's tied dead tight, tight under my chin. There is no practical reason for it at all. It's just, I just think it's sexist, to be honest, but the women don't. Um, so if they accept it, then that's up to them. The teens are required to attend school during their stay in Lebanon. Aman is ready with her instructions. You have to wear these clothes. Nice ones. <laughs> oh, nice long sleeve shirt. Nice. And a trousers. Oh, it's awful. I fucking hate uniform. Honestly, I actually feel like crying. I really didn't. I'm not wearing this. I feel like I'm working in an ice cream like, shop. Look, look, I have no For a man, a first class <laughs> education is the greatest oh, gift a parent can give their child. The most important achievement a human can achieve in life is education. Because education is uh, it's the road we have to walk to get what we want. Without education, we have nothing. But for college dropout Debbie, school was always a social event. I was put a in the eye with it. Aman's already told her the school dress code bans makeup. Debbie, has he put any more eyelashes, uh, mascara on your eyelashes? 
Like I've put one more layer on, but just let honestly, just let the school worry about it. No, it's my responsibility to tell you that they will phone me and they will tell me that uh, she didn't obey our rules. I have. I haven't put much. Like I haven't got as much as I normally do on. Yes, they are. No, that's no, not. That's honestly, not. when you were first wake up, they were perfect. Your eyelashes. Mm. They were perfect. You know what you've done to them? For me, they look like the legs of a cockroach. Thank you. <laughs> I'm actually dreading this now. <gasps> At least we look sexy though. That's the main thing. Eh? The teens are heading here, the Lebanon Evangelical School. It's a Christian institution but welcomes students from all religions. Englishman Dr. White is the headmaster. He has a progressive approach to education. I want to tell them what I believe, and then it's up to them to work out whether they think it's right or think it's wrong. And they, I want to have discussions, I want them to think. But the teens will have to answer to a man if their behaviour doesn't meet her expectations. Like, I'm dressed in shit clothes, so the only thing that's making me, me, like me, me, is my makeup. Like, if I respect their culture in the uniform, they should respect mine in the makeup. Dr. White has called them to his office. Uh, Daniel. Yeah. And? Debbie. Debbie. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a seat. Hiya. Hi. Cheers. So the main rule is no chewing gum and no abusive language okay. in the classroom, but I think that's the same. Debbie, one more button. One more button. Second button done up when we're not doing ties. Debbie, I don't know if you were told that one of the rules is no makeup in school. Yeah, I did get told, but um, I don't compromise on it. I've always worn it, I always will. Can you tone the, the whatever it's called, that mascara on your eyelashes? It, well, it doesn't really come it doesn't, off. It doesn't come off? No. Okay. You'd have to cut your eyelashes Pretty off. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. It's glued yeah. on. We, we say no makeup. If you get a, a method of taking it off, I'd like you to. I will tone it down. We'll just see how comfortable I feel. Please, <laughs> please. You can't see any other student with their button undone except Sam. Yeah, well done. Again. Both of them done up. The main lesson of the day is English. And the topic for debate is family values. Debbie, you care about your family thinks about you? No, well, they don't have an opinion on me, to be honest. Um, I'm not close with my family. So. And you don't have an opinion on them? No. Daniel, would you say the same from what you put there? Well, they feed me, so that's <laughs> the main important thing. So that's like... all you would use them for? Oh, and they put a roof over my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There's nothing else. Uh, you don't care what they think about you. I don't care what they think about me. Cause the teen's selfish attitudes might be cool in England, but Lebanese culture has a different perspective. But, like, let's say he comes out and says something, like, completely out of order to his family, especially Lebanese culture, they'll abandon you straight away. They'll be like, oh, we're not going to handle that in our family because it's respect to the family and it brings shame. Who agrees with that? Amma, if you say something wrong, yes. your family will abandon you. Because of the culture. Exactly. If family would abandon me if I say something wrong, I should have been abandoned a long time ago. You have to respect the family, but yeah. like if you do something your father doesn't want you to do, he would just abandon you. Or exactly. Like, but don't you think that your parents know much better than you do? They know what's good for you. Everyone's family's different. So like some people, some families might be like tolerant of bad behavior, like. Uh, like our family, though, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, we've, we've got away with a lot more than we should have. Like, over here, so like you would say, I, I would have probably been abandoned. Yeah. OK. We're going to do some homework. The essay that you have to write is on the title, 500 words, so it's like two sides of A4, with the title, Why Bother? True to form, Daniel puts his music before his studies. But to her credit, Debbie knuckles down. Hello. So you're not going to do your, you're not doing your assignment. No. Debbie is almost finished, Debbie. I've already said I don't want to do it. I don't do homework at home. Yes, at home. home. You are not now here. You are not at home. Yeah, no, no, you are no, now no, at no, my no, house. No, you are not now at my house. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm asking you politely to do your assignment. No, I'm saying politely, I don't want to do it. But you have to. We have to do some things in our life. We don't like to do it, but we have to do it. This is life. This is what life is about. We, I don't like to cook, but I have to cook. So yeah, I'll stick yeah. to your to your mind. Yeah, you're yeah, not gonna, you're gonna, gonna, gonna change it. it. No. Okay, fine. A 500-word essay to a school that I'm not gonna see again, and on a, on a on a thing like why bother when I can just say, well, yeah, why bother? I'm not gonna do it. It seems very vague. It's the only to answer the question. I'll talk to them about it, but. If I'm writing it down, never to be marked, so it doesn't mean anything, there's no point. Yes, I am disappointed with Daniel today. I, I was surprised. I think Daniel's problem is probably with uh, getting orders. Doesn't like to be told to do something. He, he thinks himself he's free to do whatever he wants, whenever he likes. He doesn't bother. Debbie may have done her homework, but a man wants to discuss her reliance on makeup. Can I can we have a talk? Mm -hmm. Here. Have a seat, please. You should take your mascara off. It doesn't come off. Like I do not take it off for anyone ever. Because I used to get bullied about the way I look. So uh, you are so pretty. No, I'm artificially pretty. There's a difference. So. Does uh, eyelashes give you confidence? That's yeah, confidence? definitely. Why? Because it's, I don't know, it's like a guard, isn't it? Honestly, I lose my personality and everything without my makeup on. I'm not me. It's just, it is kind of like, it sounds, it does sound pathetic. It, like me wearing makeup and dressing the way I do changed absolutely everything for me. Like, um, I stopped getting bullied. Stop being a nerd, stop kind of being unpopular, started getting trip better, started getting drinks bought for us, and it's like, it's kind of who I am now, I'm used to it. This is uh, absolutely ridiculous. I'm not taking it off. I can't. It's like if I've got to wear that stupid uniform, it's the only thing I've got to kind of keep myself. Look at the hiccups. <laughs> like I said from the start, I'm not compromising with my makeup and that. It's just like, oh well, go a night without it, go a day without it. It's like, if it's that easy, I'll do it. <laughs> It's halfway through the teen stay in Lebanon. Wearing limited makeup, Debbie has decided to get her confidence from elsewhere. She's uncovered her secret stash of vodka. Let's we'll see how we can get into trouble. Like, it's not like we're going to go in and go, look what we've got. If we get a bottle of coke, drink some, tip that in, we eat one and no one's going to question it. Before they have the chance to start drinking, Daniel needs to explain his lack of homework. Guys, <coughs> I was too tired, especially the title of it being Why Bother. Yeah. It was like, Why Bother Doing It? Well, you could, you could have written about Why Bother. Why Bother. Yeah, right. <laughs> right about that. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. I was too tired last night. And... So, what's the, what was the point of setting up? Why didn't you tell me yesterday I'm not going to do it? Debbie, did you do your, did you do your thing? Good, Carla. Where's Carla? You do it. David. Jay. Got it. Everybody else did it. Good for them. It is good for them. Yeah. Let's put your collar down to your button up. Please. OK. Daniel's spirited defence has attracted some kindred spirits to the UK teens. Trying to find a place to go out. Oh. We got told that the nightlife was really good in Lebanon. Yeah, it's yeah. like that's yeah, yeah. taking you guys out. Take us out, honestly. Take us out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You have to take the nightlife here is actually amazing because you can actually get in yeah. and you can buy cigarettes here without legal aid and smoke. it's a dollar. Typical of their attitudes at home, neither Debbie nor Daniel have any interest in how their actions affect others. Oh, 
<laughs> they couldn't be more disrespectful to the devout Hajar family if they tried. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes fucking gorgeous. You know, it tastes like black uh, corn, actually. It is, isn't it? Are you allowed to drink this in uh, England? Yeah. Well, no, not legally. But... Oh, Wait, I'm gonna. Legally. Not legally. Yeah. Oh. Dalian and Debbie, I just need yes. to see you in my office for about 10 minutes. Yeah, sure, right? cool. Yeah, that's fine. Dr. White has called Aman into his office to deal with her surrogate teens. How are you? Debbie, did you drink this in school? No, I haven't. Was it drunk in school? OK, yeah, we drank it, that one at school. This one here? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh. Debbie, who, who did? Both? Yeah. Both of you. But you know, from the first day, alcohol are not allowed in my house. But we're not in your house, though. It's, it's in the In room. my house. Yeah, yeah. This was in my and house. And as well, we're kind of like getting This was it in we my house, in my girl's bedroom. This is very, for me, a very great violation of the rule. Let uh, Daniel smoke. Be honest, because God is seeing you. Let him smoke. We had one cigarette today. Yes. What are you having the cigarettes? In your pocket. In your pocket. Yeah. Give it to me. Oh. You should learn that in the future, in real life, you must obey rules. You should respect others. I do respect others. But that, no, you don't. If you respect, you would do as you've been told. This is only a short period of time. We are not, not asking too much from you. We are not taking anything out of your privileges. We are just wanting to respect what we ask you to do. Can I have a cigarette? OK. There's one thing, definite things is going to happen. Your makeup uh, is not going anywhere. Yes, it will be. No. Stay with me until you go back we'll to see. England. We'll see. Yes, you we will see. see. Don't be now. Done. I swear I will kick off like mad. OK. Do not. Okay. Do it. Do it. And you will know what's going to happen. No, I'm not. I haven't got no, physical no, no. contact. I just mean. I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to touch you. Yeah. I want only right. the two, the no. case, the makeup case. I told you there's no case. compromising on that. Mm -mm. Yes, you will. No. Yes, you will. No. What we're stuck on is Debbie. Yes. And I will not budge. Debbie, can you agree on no makeup until... Can you try that? N none of your friends are going to see you. Where is the mascara? Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Daniel and Debbie are not the only ones to suffer a man's wrath. Janan has come clean to her mother, telling her she knew about the alcohol. She helped Debbie to break these rules. And she, has, she must be punished, punished the same. I don't know why. The girls are much naughtier than the boys. The boys are more honest. Do you have something uh, less than them? No. So why are you are laughing now? No, I'm not laughing. Yes, you laughed uh, just a few seconds ago. You shouldn't. You should be ashamed, ashamed of yourself. Don't look me in the eye. Go to your bedroom, because I'm not satisfied with you. She also took my phone, but she's going to give it to me tomorrow when she, she gets to took your phone? Why? Yeah. Because... Uh, uh, as a punishment, you know. That's not, it's got, oh my God, it wasn't your fault though. You know, um, I just didn't want to tell her because you said you're not going to get me in trouble. So I said that nothing's going to happen. Yeah. I was surprised that. I know, no, I didn't like, oh shit, yeah, I forgot. Because um, when we were talking at the school, um, she went, um, oh, you should have handed it over. And then, um, yeah, I said, oh, Janan told me to, but I said no. Like, I didn't even... Yeah, I didn't even think that she'd do that. Bollocks. Sorry. She told me she's not going to get me in trouble, but uh, it seems that I got in trouble, yeah. I trusted her, but, uh, you know, and she gave me a promise, yeah. Tell the girls something. OK, both you, you have five minutes to get ready. Despite the tension, everyone needs to put on a brave face. They have a family commitment they can't avoid.
friend of Amand's is getting married, and it would be an insult if the entire family didn't attend. It's a chance for Daniel and Debbie to redeem themselves and make Amand proud. But Debbie is still sulking, and for once, isn't in the mood for a party. Everyone's making out like I'm doing some no, wrong. No. You think you haven't done anything wrong? No, not at all. I haven't. You haven't? No. The true... Uh... No, cos I really don't want your opinion. It really doesn't care. Like, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to you, but, no. it, but it does to me. Well, because yeah, obviously I have your opinion right matters to, to yourself. To tell you my opinion. You won't like the answer you get. Honestly, I'm in a really shit, crap mood. I really do not trust myself to be civil. I think, Mom, you know what's the problem with you? What's up? Yes. That you don't have self-confidence at all. Because if no, you I do, did until no, I came if here. If you do, you would listen to me and understand what I'm telling you. I have you. listened to you if, for the no, past no, hour and a half. You are always listening to yourself, which is, I'm 100% it's wrong. Absolutely. Cool. I'll, I'll add that to the Absolutely list of everything wrong. else. That's why no, no, no. don't worry. I, I'm, I'm definite that Days will prove that to you that you are absolutely wrong. Yes, I am. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes, you are. Oh, fuck yourself, you are. I swear. Just literally get out my face. You've been swearing at me. Yes, I am. Just let go. No one has ever spoken to a man like this before. Honestly, I thought I treated her as if she was my own daughter. Honestly, I don't want her in my house. Honestly. So live alone. Find her a cave in somewhere place and live there. But in my house, I don't think my husband will accept this at all. At all, he will be very, very angry. Back at home, Aman has told her husband about Debbie's insulting behavior. Debbie. He's called a family meeting. His son Mahmoud translates, and there's no mistaking his meaning. Daniel, مثل أولادنا. الكلام قلة الأدب اللي قالتها لا إيمان. We all do wrong, but the rude way that you're talking to Iman is unacceptable. في اعتذار بنك لإلها ما هي مش راح تعتذر. أنت بقى تعتذر لإلها بالتعليمات اللي نحن عطيناه وانتهى بالموضوع. He's saying uh, the last thing he's going to say, uh, to apologize to the Imam, because um, in our cultures, this is a very big word. Debbie's usual reaction to a family argument is to stubbornly stand her ground and definitely never apologize. That's me shut down from here now. Nothing's going to change. Like, it's been going on with my stepdad for years. Like, I'm not comfortable staying in this house now, and I'm not apologizing. <laughs> I know she is not your mother, but uh, you can just feel that she's your mother and talk to her, sit with her, explain to her how you feel, and believe me, you feel comfortable. As soon as someone says, well, you should change this, what I hear is, you know, that's wrong, that's bad. <laughs> and I, I just take it personally. <laughs> Like, being here it's just kind of made it even more, like, drummed into us that I'm not good enough. It's just so intense here. It's just too intense, and it's, like, obviously brought out the worst in us, to be honest. As punishment for his own selfish behaviour, a man has sent Daniel to spend a day at a local children's charity. She wants him to realise just how privileged he is and to experience a world that does not revolve around him. I, I'm really nervous about coming here today. I, I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but if it's going to be scrubbing the floors or cleaning up, I'm not going to enjoy it. Good morning. Good morning. The home of hope cares for street children who've been abandoned or abused by their families. The children's identity is being hidden for their protection. Here was the little ones sleep, ages uh, three to seven, eight. 
they sleep here. Okay. Usually, uh, little children don't give us lots of problems. Yeah. <laughs> Is it the older ones that give the problems? Yeah. Do my son. is a one year old Sudanese Hello. who came and he is part of our family now. I would like to tell you about some of the stories of the children. The saddest one, of course, is the story of a little girl. She was uh, four or five years old when the police brought, us, brought her here. Her mom was trying to sell her for body parts, you know to uh, some rich uh, family. Now you can see her smile and laugh, and, uh, and this makes me feel so happy. At least I'd say this place, this home, has paid its dues to humanity, you know? Yeah, definitely. Daniel gets down to work, and for once, he's not complaining. I don't think I've ever done the washing up at home. But I don't know, I don't even fill the dishwasher up, and that's not hard, is it? So. <laughs> These kids, like, they don't have anything else, and they put, and this is all they've got, and like I said, this is their home, and it's just, it's inspiring, really, and it's really awfully emotional, like, some of the stories told me and some of the kids, like, been sold for body parts and been beaten and abused, it's, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what to say about it, it's kind of speechless, and you'd hardly ever catch me speechless, so, it's kind of, I don't know, I really don't know what to say about it. Do you not have any tool, any tools to fix any of these? Or? No, I can fully fix it. I think. Like I've worked with bikes before. I'm quite good with bikes, so I could probably help fix them more. Uh -huh. I think they're fixable. It's just <laughs> it'd be a lot of work, and I'd need some tools like a chain splitter and a punch repair kit for most of them. But they're all fixable. The teens have been in Beirut for nearly a week when Debbie has her first contact from home. We absolutely love you to bits and we'll always be here for you no matter what. There used to be a little girl who would sit on her dad's knee when she was upset, who always wanted to hold her hand, hold his hand, not her mum's, and would tell him all about her problems and he was the only one who could make it better. That little girl is all grown up now, and we accept that, but if you see her, tell her we miss her. <laughs> to help her understand that growing up brings its own responsibilities, and that she needs to start and face them. We can only do so much, and we feel at times we have done more than we should. The rest has to come from you. Love you loads, Mum and Dad. Oh, it's just that last paragraph. <laughs> I did used to be really close with him. With both of them. Just seeing the family together and seeing how close like they all are and it's just kind of proved how distant I was with my family. And it's happened like so slowly and over like such a gradual time. I hadn't noticed, but like it's gonna sound really awful. I kind of feel like I'm not in a family. It's like <laughs> there's a mum, my dad, my brother, and then there's me. There's kind of a lot to in the house, to be honest. <laughs> like I want it to change. <laughs> kind of want my parents back, my brother. After a night of soul searching, Debbie has decided to take Mahmoud's advice and approach Iman. Um, Iman, I'd just like to say um, about yesterday. Um, I don't deal well with criticism, but I should have expressed myself in a more appropriate manner than 
swearing at you, so um, I do apologise for swearing to you. Like, yeah, I don't want to be on bad terms. Um, it's just a natural thing as soon as um, I get like um, upset or angry, the first thing I go to is swearing, which is pretty sad, really, but um, I didn't realise it would offend you as much as it did. And it wasn't meant to offend you. For me, it's just kind of a, oh, whatever. OK, fine with me. Cool. Thank you for your apology. Yeah. Shall I, we... am, I am sorry. It's she okay. has shown respect really to me. I think she has passed all the, the past things. She's done, she's a great girl. She's in deep, deep inside her. She's a wonderful girl. Honestly, I feel, I do feel so much better. It's like there's no more pressure or there's no more atmosphere anymore. So I'm glad of it. Yeah, I'm really glad of it. And so it didn't, I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been if you hadn't have spoken to me last night. So I really, like, thanks for that. It's nice to know that, I, like, if I do apologise, I don't feel like I'm, I've lost, whereas I did before. That was why I wouldn't apologise. I was too stubborn. It's like, no, I'm not apologising. If I do, then I've lost it, haven't I? Like, I've lost the argument. But whereas apologising now just seems like, oh, well, you know, if I'm in the wrong, I might as well. Daniel has asked to revisit the home of hope. He wants to try and do something positive for someone else. I'm just finishing this one. Once I pull this off, it's finished. Good. Unless he kills himself on it. <laughs> Is it good? Is it good? Thanks. It's OK. <laughs> That's good. That's one down. There's loads more to go. <laughs> He's realised he has an ability he can share and teaches the older boys the skills to fix bikes for themselves. of hope has inspired Daniel to complete his school assignment. The essay on why bother. It's making me think about why I shouldn't bother for people and like my parents and just uh, it's making me think that I should stop being selfish. I uh, found an opportunity to do the homework. <laughs> oh the one from Friday. Excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent. But, um, I like to see that sign that says nothing is too late. Because I've done it. Excellent. <laughs> Good man. So. Good man. Why bother? Spending time in Lebanon has made me think about my selfish, egotistical way. But most of all, spending time at Home of Hope made me realise why bothering really does make a difference. Bothering is the one thing the kids rely on at the Home of Hope. If no one bothered, these battered, abused and abandoned kids would have nothing. I live my life taking everything and everyone for granted. The kids at the shelter have nothing apart from the shelter, yet are thankful for everything that they receive. I've done one thing for the kids there, which was fix bikes, something I do frequently, yet the kids were thankful. One of the kids told me I was a great man for doing so. I lead my life on hedonism, although it hurts others, especially my parents. The children at the centre would do anything for parents like I have. I do nothing for my parents. It's brilliant. Thank you. It's brilliant. Well done. Thanks. Thank you for that homework. Um, you want to keep it? I want, I want you to show it to your parents. OK. They've got to see that. The British teen stay is drawing to a close, but not before one final excursion, a picnic in the country, Lebanese style. It's the first time in years Debbie's been out in public without makeup. If it was back in Carlisle, I wouldn't have went if I didn't have my makeup. I'd have just sat at home. So it is a pretty big thing for me to yes. be here now and think... not to be worried about it. I think this feeling you should take with you back home. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try. Because I got like, what, half an hour extra in bed this morning because I didn't have to get up and worry about my face. 
so that was kind of nice. <laughs> Had a nice lion. <laughs> After the last couple of days and stuff, seeing how hard other people get it, and um, you, I can kind of see why it'd be a good thing to do things for other people rather than just thinking about myself all the time. It's time for Debbie and Daniel to leave Beirut and return home to their own families. I think we had a great experience with them. When Debbie came, we had so much in common, the way we think, and it was so fun having her. I grew up with my and it was kind of a blessing in disguise. It's kind of taught me how I can deal with my dad in a better way. Yeah. It's been one hell of a journey. <laughs> I'm going to remember it for the rest of my life. Yeah, I feel a bit emotional actually. I'm quite excited to see him. <laughs> He's probably grown up just in 10 days, but then that's just been silly. <laughs> Is that to fit, in with... Is it? Is it to fit in with the culture? Everyone's got beards over there. Did it, have, it, did it have an impact? It did. A lot of the places did, yeah. The, the main thing for me was going to the Home of Hope, the charity play, yeah. the urban shelter. The same where, people with nothing. Yeah, the same people with nothing, and I take everything for granted. Mm -hmm. And then in seeing those, like, they did, they'd give anything to have all the things that I have. Mm -hmm. From speaking to him, he's had quite um, a positive experience. Um, which I think can only enrich his life and, and hopefully will have, will have some impact. No! Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the family to bits. Like, um, they've welcomed us back at like any time. And if I'm ever back in Lebanon, they've said to like, go straight to their house and so so what, think, what have you learned from it? Honestly, I've learned that it's OK to back down when I'm in the wrong. Like, especially, it's mainly me and you, isn't it? I never apologise to you, you know what I mean? Like, it's always, even over the pettiest thing, we just, it's a silence, isn't it, after we argue? And, like, um, it was the first time I'd really apologised to anyone. And I kind of thought, like, I'd feel like I'd lost, you know what I mean? Like, oh, she's won, but it didn't feel like that at all. It's obvious that she has spent time thinking about how she's behaved and especially towards you mm. you know because i didn't expect that at all that she would let things go that she would she was prepared to sort of stand down and if nothing else i think that's going to make a big difference isn't it